playing a Tuesday night in Cheyenne, Wyoming, you know, we might get 70 or 80 people, which is still awesome, but then we might go to Denver on a Saturday night and get 500 people. I mean, it's just all over the place to where we'd be on tour with Slayer. We've toured with them three different times, and we might play one night for 4,000 or 5,000 people moshing and jumping, and then they have the next night off. We're like, well, we still got to try and pick up some gas money, you know, because we're not Slayer, we're Hemlock, so I'll book us a club show or a bar show in between. So we'll go one night from 4,000 people to the next night to 150, and then the next night we go back with Slayer and we'll play for another 5,000 people that night. And But the thing about it that I always tell my dudes, I'm like, whether there's 5,000 or whether there's 500 or whether there's 50, we got to rock as hard as we can every night because the people that are there are the diehards, the ones that are supporting. You know, even if we're jamming in front of 100 people, we're still just going as hard and as sweaty as we can just to make sure everybody's having fun yeah and shit man it 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 kills me that i can't make it to the show tomorrow night at the curtain club in dallas texas so any of my listeners in dallas pull a jedi trick and just teleport yourself (laughs) in spirit i wish standing on the side (laughs) stage with the blue glow i wish i could man but i'm pretty much the only guy that's available for my workplace but, yeah, um, no, it's all good. I appreciate you taking the you time know, to do a little interview and to catch up because I know we've known each other for probably 17 or 18 years now. But yeah. It's cool to get a minute to sit down and talk to you and reminisce on the good old days and then also talk about the future coming up and yeah. also about currently today with the sun shining and the breeze feeling good in Wichita Falls, Texas. Well, it's doing that there, but it you know not doing that here in Dallas, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I heard tomorrow when we get to Dallas, it's supposed to be 80, and then we're in Lubbock the next day, it's supposed to be 88 degrees, so it's getting warmer, but we were just in snow and cold <laughs> five days ago, so it's wow. nice to get the spring so, finally coming around. So you said something about, you know, you know the tattoo shop, uh, naming his, his place after your song, Brutality. I remember, um, oh shit, man, how, how many long, how many years ago was it? I was still in a band called Pale Face, and I had told yeah. we we uh, we had, we played at the one six nine in Wichita Falls, and I told you yeah. that I named that band after a lyric from "No Money, No Love." No money, no love. Yeah. I remember having that conversation with you, even though I headbang a lot. I do remember a few things. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of headbang, yeah, no, that's you... awesome. That VFW one six nine was always a fun show. I think we played there three or four times. But yeah, I remember you told me, and you were kind of like, "Is that cool?" You know, Pell Face. You know, I love that song, and I was like, "Dude, that's an honor. That's awesome that you liked it that much." And you know, it's just cool, and 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 it is fun how. You just make friends around the world, and we're always easygoing dudes. So I was actually proud for you to name your band that. It was cool. Hell yeah! I mean, it just it just stuck. I mean, I, I told the guys in the band, I'm like, what about Pale Face? And they're like, okay, um, why? I said, well, some friends of mine from Nevada, they have a song called "No Money, No Love," and one of the lyrics in the song is Pale Face. Rat race leads to pale face or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Drain, drain the life out of you, basically. <laughs> right. You know, and, if you get caught up it. in all the chaos of the world, you got to actually take a minute to slow down and breathe and and play some rock and roll from time to time. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, rat uh, race, rat race is a pale face and empty mind with a dead taste. <laughs> hell yeah! Are you going to be playing that tomorrow night? Yeah, 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 we'll bust it out. I'll dedicate it to your Jedi spirit. <laughs> Thank you. Make sure you get some video and send that shit to me. But uh, I want to yeah. I want to ask you, um, I, I know a couple years ago you had neck or back surgery. Yeah, I'm going on four years now. I ruptured an L4, L5 vertebrae disc. And wow. uh, don't do it. If any of you listeners out there don't rupture them discs, <laughs> that shit sucks. Man, I was on stage in Des Moines, Iowa, and I had been having some problems with my back anyway, just where it always felt tight. And for years, I had been pretty overweight and just not taking care of myself, you know, living on the road, and you eat what's quick and cheap and, you know, and too much just fast food and too much junk food and 
gas station hot dog cheeseburger oh. or whatever in the middle of the night and <laughs> it caught up to me to where I ruptured a disc and it was Friday the 13th oddly enough in Des Moines, Iowa and I just felt a low back just kind of like pinch and then my whole left leg lit up like hot fire from the inside like the devil was living in my leg it, it, actually a good way to describe what it felt like is if you ever put a hot dog in the microwave and you go too long and it splits open all the way down that's what my leg felt like it felt like it split open all the wow. way down from my hip to my foot wow but it was fine it wasn't even red it was just all sciatic nerve pain and it hurt so bad i couldn't straighten it out i couldn't bend it and it just hurt and hurt but we finished the show i barely made it off stage and barely made it into the bus and i <laughs> laid in my bunk and i had to have my wife drive the bus because normally i'm even driving and but i couldn't even sit like it hurt so bad to sit down I was laying in my bunk and my left leg just started twitching like a fish by itself. And I wasn't, I don't drink or do drugs or anything, so I knew I was totally straight. It's just my leg was crazy. So it was just twitching and flipping. And I was like, something's wrong. And we were on our way to Chicago to do a show. So we had to pull over and go to the ER room and they're like, you need surgery. So we actually had to, unfortunately, postpone like seven shows. Luckily, we didn't have 57 more, you know, but uh, we had seven more shows. But I couldn't walk for almost two months. It was insane. I could barely hobble and, you know, just up and down the hallway. I had to lay in bed. I had to take hydrocodone and all that stuff, and I don't ever even hardly take aspirin. But, man, it hurt so bad. This little doctor dude in Omaha, Nebraska, is like, I can fix you, but you got to keep your weight down. you got to drink lots of water and do your stretches. And So he fixed me up. And now I do yoga every day. I've lost, I was actually losing some weight at the time, but I just, I hadn't really taken care of myself. And so, but now I'm down 117 pounds for my heaviest. I feel younger and better than ever. I weighed in the other day at 199.2. And I haven't been that skinny since like 11th grade in high school. It's insane. Because at my heaviest, I think I was like 318, 320. Wow. But uh, it catches up on you. You know, I mean, like, I don't know where that 50 pounds came from and all that, but after we toured in Europe with propane, we realized over in Europe they offer a lot more healthy alternatives and stuff, and I don't like to preach to anybody. If people are happy, they're happy, you know, and I don't mind if people are chubby or fluffy or whatever, you know, I'm not a fitness guru by any means, but I just realized I was falling apart personally and I was tired of being tired, and then when my back went, I was like, all right, this is game over, I can't do anything. Mm -hmm. All I want to do is play music, but I can't even walk. So they did back surgery on me, and luckily it was an easy one where I didn't need to get any like uh, didn't need to get any fusions or any rods or bars or anything. They just did a clean little cut on the on the disc and did all my physical therapy. And they're like, "Oh, you're doing great. You're healing up." I'm like, "Yeah," because I want to make those shows up and run within three months <laughs> back at it again. Just and I, I went, the doctor told me not to jump for a few months, but uh, as soon as I healed up, I yoga, yoga feeling good just. Uh, kicking ass taking care of myself and now I'm 40 years old and I feel like I'm 25 even though we're on our 25 year anniversary tour but I feel like I'm 25 so it's, uh, it's cool though because there are a lot of people that come to the shows and they ask how I lost all the weight and I'll gladly tell anybody and everybody you know how I did it you know different things work for different people so but I'm not preaching health by any means I'm just preaching happiness basically I want everybody to be happy and good Hell yeah, man. I just turned 42, and I'm very, 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 very out of shape. And uh, um, I, I've been trying. Like, I keep telling myself in my head I'm going to go on this certain diet, and you know, because my blood pressure is high. The my, diet don't work as well just because it's a temporary <laughs> thing. You have to do almost like a shift, a mental and physical shift. Wow. And one of the best ways, because I'm not a gym rat, I don't really hit the gym. I mean, now that I've lost the weight, I can actually run and do jumping jacks. And I, I did 64 push-ups the other day when before I could maybe do 15, you know, and I'm feeling better. But one of the best ways to lose weight and to do it is to eat a lot of baked potatoes. And I'm not lying, I'm not making it up because they got a bad rap for starches, but they keep you full. They've got really good, they'll take your blood pressure down. And I thought I would get bored of it, but a baked potato is so good that you just you take it, you can put barbecue sauce on it one night. 
And the next day you could put mustard on it. It tastes totally different. And the next day you could put steak sauce on it. Then the next day you could put salt on it. And you could just put different, different condiments on it. You know, of course, we don't put sour cream and bacon and butter and all that on it because that definitely will help you pack on the pounds. But a potato with just some real, you know, sometimes you even just put ketchup on it and it tastes like french fries. And the salsa makes it taste like a nice Mexican potato, you know, thing. But we don't fry them and get them all greasy. But that was one of the biggest tricks I had. I was like, no way, I, I love potatoes. You always, you know, when you sit down, that's always one of the best things. You're like, So we have mashed potatoes. My wife will cut them into like the big thick cut fries, but bake them instead of fry them. And I'll just eat so many to where you're full, but it's like a healthy full instead of the real thick. You know, I mean, I ate my fair share of Burger King, Carl's Jr., McDonald's, all that <laughs> stuff every single day. I love we it. It still tastes good, but I don't eat it anymore because I was tired of being tired. Right. Man, so, baked potatoes are a good one. Corn, you know, rice, all that stuff. It, but and one of the one of the main things that I actually personally did, and I don't, I keep saying I don't want to preach it to you because I don't want the listeners to think that I'm trying to trick them or convince them to do whatever. I oh, just no, want man. people to head bang you know, and support music and have fun. But me and my wife chose to go vegetarian, and one of the main reasons that made that easy was because of Mexican food in it. You know, Mexican American food, a big old burrito with black beans or refried beans and guac and pico <laughs> onions, you know, and for a long time that even when I was real heavy, you know, I just that's, we love Mexican food, but we just cut out all the extra greasy, greasy stuff, you know, that makes a big difference. I feel younger and better than ever. When my back went out, I think I was 36 at the time. Wow. And I felt like I was 70. Ooh. And now I'm 40 and I feel like I'm 25, so I'm like a vampire. I'm anti-aging or something. So <laughs> when you get on stage, you give that full 100% and no pain at all? You're jumping, you're you're interacting with oh, yeah, the crowd? I'm going harder and better than ever. I'm jumping higher. I could scream better, head bang. I mean, you still get stiff, but I stretch it out instead of just suffering it out, you know, and do my yoga every day. And it's actually... It's funny because yoga sounds girly where you put your leg up behind your head and do all right. that. I couldn't. Well, well, I still can't I do that. Yeah, I get but, it. But somebody yeah. told me about uh, that wrestler dude when I hurt my back, the Diamond Dallas Page guy. Yeah. He got slammed in a wrestling match and the same thing with his L4, L5 vertebrae. And they said that this is basically yoga for your core and yoga for men. I mean, it still works for women too because my wife does it with me. <laughs> but... Uh, it just basically works on loosening up your core and your neck and, you know, your shoulders and all that. So it works. Uh, it's rad. I can't do those cool scorpion poses yet and all that stuff, but just basically work on on uh, stretching the essential muscles for jumping around on stage like a madman. Plus, hold, you know, holding a bass guitar and head banging and all that. I know it's not good for you, but <laughs> that's what we do because we love to do it, you know? Right. One of these days we'll be old men sitting in wheelchairs or whatever talking about the glory days of head banging, but hopefully with me eating good and taking care of myself and doing my yoga, hopefully I'll be that weird uh, gray hair guy with a dark tan walking on the beach in Florida or California, you know, something like that. Maybe some great dreadlocks here and there. You never know. <laughs> you won't be talking about it. You'll be seeing it on YouTube or whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. channel they come yeah. up with later. So let me ask, um, for my uh, my listeners, where can they catch up on the latest news and everything, tour dates for Hemlock? Facebook is always the easy go-to just because it reaches so many people. And we got Facebook it's Hemlock World, H-E-M-L-O-C-K-W-O-R-L-D, Hemlock World. But we actually have our old school webpage still, too, and we use that a lot. A lot of people from Europe, uh, I guess a, a few years back, people in Europe weren't on Facebook as much, but now they actually are. It's cool because, you know, people over in Germany are like, add me on Facebook. And I'm like, so it's cool, but uh, we have our regular webpage, and a lot of people from overseas, Still go to the www.com one, and that one's actually hemlockworld.com. Yeah, I still and then, go of course, to that you one. You know, we got all the Twitters and Instagrams, and they're all hemlock or hemlock world, and YouTube. Actually, you can go on YouTube, hemlock world, and we got some real funny videos. We have a video where we dressed our guitar player up as a merman, and uh, no money, no love. We all have the cheese ball cowboy outfits on. We filmed that in Tombstone, Arizona, actually. 
We were like, well, let's go to Tombstone and film a cheesy Western video for that song. 